Well guys, as the saying goes, just when you think you know everything, you get hit with something brand new. I've been in this market for 12 years and two things happened yesterday that were absolutely unbelievable. Two crazy things happened yesterday that I've never seen before when I tried to buy this penny stock. I, it's like crazy, two big things, okay? I've never seen this happen before. In my 12 years being in the stock market, never seen either of these situations. And these two things should help you guys out tremendously if you ever get in the situation. At least you're going to know what the heck is going on versus me. I was completely clueless on what was going on yesterday when these two things happened. And just so you know, I don't usually buy penny stocks. I mean, it is very few and far between that I buy any stock less than $5, okay? And I mean, very few and far between. The only penny stock related type stock that I have bought in the past, I don't know, several years probably is the planet. And and that is it, okay? That is absolutely it. I cannot think of one other stock I bought that's under $5 anytime recently. This is pretty rare, all right? So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you don't mind, smash the thumbs up. That helps us out in the YouTube algorithm massively. I appreciate each and every one of you guys that always smash the thumbs up. It helps me out tremendously in the channel out. Also, if you haven't had the chance to get in Stock Hub yet, make sure you go ahead and do that. It's absolutely free to get in there. You can talk stocks with a ton of other investors out there. And by the way, Tesla's reporting earnings tomorrow. That's gonna be absolutely Absolute craziness. So I can only imagine the chat tomorrow. Alrighty, guys, let's start getting into this video. A little story time for you on what happened yesterday, all right? So yesterday, in one of my accounts, I had a little bit of money just kind of chilling in there. So I was like, okay, there's this new stock I'm kind of interested in. I'm just gonna kind of buy some, kind of like a test, okay? So I bought $460 worth of stock. It was like 300 shares worth. And the stock was like a dollar and some change. And then I saw $50 commission? What? What a $50 commission? I thought, I'm like, that's a typo or something. $50? That's ridiculous. I mean, first off, like you can buy pretty much all stocks commission free nowadays for the most part or so I thought, right? I mean, I, I haven't paid a commission in probably at least a year or two through Fidelity Investments. They used to charge $5. Before that, it was a lot more than that. And I'm like, $50 commission? What in the world is going on? I need, I did the math on it, I would need a 10% gain on that stock just to break even on the buy side order, okay? But not just that, if I ever wanna sell the stock, I basically need a 20% gain just to break even between the buy and sell commissions on that on that particular amount of money. That's ridiculous. So I put in that, that move for $460, which I never buy for that small of an amount, but I happen to buy that small of an amount in this one and look what happens $50 commission it brings me back to the days back when fidelity used to charge $19.95 per trade like when I was getting involved in the stock market like 2008 2009 it was $19.95 every time you bought or sold a stock regardless of how much you bought you could buy like $20 worth of stock and you wouldn't even be able to buy it because your trade commission would be too much I thought it was a glitch I'm like this, maybe this is a glitch because that is so ridiculous. Fifty dollars? That doesn't even make like sense. Like what in the heck? Okay, but I had no time at the moment, so I couldn't call Fidelity. I'm like, it was just way too busy. Okay, but then things got even more strange about this. All right, things got even more strange. So then I'm like, okay, screw it. I'm gonna buy a big order and I'm gonna see if that happens again. So I try to buy twenty-two thousand dollars worth of this stock and it was about four minutes before the market closed. So this is more in tune with what I usually buy for. Like usually 5,000 or like $20,000 is usually my, most of my buy orders I'll do out there. So I'm like, okay, if I have to pay that commission, I have to pay that commission. I'll still call them about that later, but if I have to pay that commission, I'll pay that commission, okay? But I gotta do a big amount of money, okay? And then I get this message that pops up. I wish it would have screenshot. It says, we cannot execute this trade. Please call Fidelity Investments representative. And it gave like the phone number, okay? And so I don't have time for this at the time. It's just like, okay, I'm like, whatever, okay? The market's about to close anyways. By the time I get through, market will be closed. It's only like four minutes till market close. And I honestly don't have the time to be dealing with this right now. I gotta make a YouTube video. So I go ahead, prep a YouTube video, record that YouTube video about the election and the stock market and kind of what's going on there. Then I go running and I box, I play with my kids. I put my kids to bed. I meditate, I shower. I respond to DMs in the private stock group. I respond to emails. I send Cole, Blake, Trevor texts. I start 
looking into this stock that I'm all excited about even more along with this other new stock I've been looking into and I'm doing all this stuff. Next thing you know, it's 3 a.m. I still haven't gone to bed. I'm recording this video now on Loom on my new MacBook about how I made $69,000 of passive income for four, four hours of work essentially I put into this one video. I released that at 4 a.m., still haven't been to bed. Next thing you know, it's 5 a.m. and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and call Fidelity and see what the heck is going on with this whole situation. Why was I not allowed to make that move? Why did they stop me? And also, why the heck was I charged a $50 commission on a $460 move? So I call Fidelity Investments up and we chat for a whole 12 minutes according to e Apple iPhone, okay? So I get the representative on the phone within probably, ah oh gosh, he, he was on the phone within probably two minutes of me calling. Like it was real quick. I entered like my information in and boom, he, he was on there. So I have, usually the worst time to call is when the trading day is already open. And the trading day here opens at 6.30 a.m. Okay, so 5 a.m. we're talking like, you know, an hour and a half before trading actually opens, okay? And says, I'd be happy to explain these two things. They are both unrelated. Mr. Laflame, I would be happy to do that. I say, yeah, we're pushing respect on my name, okay? I'm a big time YouTuber. That's right, you call me by my last name, Mr. Laflame. That's what you call me. So, so actually, sir, uh, no, we actually call all our clients by their last name, and you're actually our most poor client at Fidelity Investments. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. okay, that might not have happened, guys. That might not have happened. Some of this might be fabricated. The majority of the, the truthful points are the truth, but some of this might be fabricated for entertainment purposes, okay? So he says, let's, let's start with why you were not allowed to buy $20,000 plus of that stock. Because I explained to him in my whole situation. And he said, basically, if you are trying to buy 9,999 shares of a penny stock, I think it's pretty much any stock, but specifically penny stocks, you have to be coded Wall Street bets. Okay, no, he didn't say that. But he did say you basically you have to have your account coded, which I think is code word for like you don't know what you're doing. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, <laughs> not code word for that, but code word essentially for like you've had them explain to you essentially like what the risks are, the risk factors are with like penny stocks and things like that. So I'm like, all right, tell me all about this. So they, he has to list some, you know, I'm like, read me my rights. He has to, you know, tell me basically a few different things about the risk factors with penny stocks, which obviously I already know all this stuff, but it's something they have to do there. And so we get all through that. He codes all my accounts, or at least that's what he says. He says, okay, Mr. Flame, I, I've coded all your accounts now, except for this one account, which was, I think, a SEP IRA. Um, but other than that, he had coded all my different accounts. So we're ready to rock and roll with that. Okay, so that's interesting. You can't buy like more than 9,999 shares of a penny stock. Uh, without basically having your account coded. Interesting. I thought I had done that with the plan in the past, but I guess not. Maybe I'd always like purchased in like 5,000 blocks or 8,000 blocks. I guess I never try to buy the planet more than 10,000 shares at one time. So, hey, total news to me. It's interesting. At least now I'm ready to go and now I can buy a million shares of a penny stock if I want, okay? All right, so now we gotta figure out this $50 commission situation. Cause I'm like, this is not cool, man. $50 commission, what in the heck is going on here? It's like, oh, you're worried about a $50 commission, Mr. Big Baller. You buy a new Tesla every week, a new house every month, and you're spending tens of thousands on a penny stock and you're worried about a $50 commission. Oh. Oh, boo to you. Okay, he didn't say that, okay? It would have been funny. I said, say one more word and I'm going to TD Ameritrade, man. Just watch your mouth. I said, no, no, sir, Mr. French. I will save them that headache. So, this stock has not been registered with a trading middleman or a middle company, I guess you can say, okay? So, therefore, the middleman charges Fidelity $100, essentially, okay? So they pass $50 on to me and $50 on to the company. So since this company is a penny stock, and it's obviously a very newer company, essentially, they have decided not to register with like a, a middleman trading firm because they didn't think there would be as much action in the stock as there has been. So in my opinion, you know, this company needs to get that done ASAP because no one likes to pay $50 commissions every time they place a move. So it really wasn't, it's not like Fidelity is making any money on that or Fidelity is like, Hmm, we're gonna charge you guys a, a bunch of money or something like that. It's really just that middleman company, that one that executes the trade in the end, that has ended up you know, charging $100 and they, they pass 50 on to the company, $50 on to me. And that's something I didn't even know existed. I didn't even know like companies had to set that up and I didn't know that was like something that was really costly to do. So I guess this company, and it is a very newer company, so I guess you know it's something that's 
costly to them, let's put it that way, okay? So I've been educated twice now, all in 12 minutes essentially, and that was interesting. Let's just put it that way, because this is stuff I literally had no clue about, all right? And he says, absolutely, Mr. LaFlame, you have a great day. So you have a great day as always, sure. And so I learned two things in one day about this penny stock situation. Now, we're talking about penny stocks, and I think this is a great time to just, like, let's talk for a moment, and let me give you my perspective on if it's worth buying a penny stock, the type of things you should stay away from when it comes to penny stocks. I think this is a real good, you know, something we can definitely kind of teach out there other than obviously those two things I just taught you there, okay? Let's talk about penny stocks for just a moment here, okay? So penny stocks, these are obviously like, most people refer to penny stocks as less than $1, okay? But I think technically, any a penny stock can be anything under, I wanna say $3 technically. It's either $3 or $5, okay? Something like that. So basically, you know, when you get it in under a dollar category, I mean, you're, you're talking about super, super spec, okay? When you're talking about, you know, a, a, well, let's say one to three, you're in pretty spec area, okay? And you definitely gotta be very, very careful of these type of stocks. Now, you see me uh, trying to buy 20 something thousand dollars worth of this, you know, speculative stock, this penny stock essentially, right? So this is obviously a stock that is pretty dang, you know, lowly priced, let's put it that way. But keep in mind, when I go to buy, you know, let's say I buy $20,000 worth of this stock, okay? Remember, I have millions invested in the market, so this is not like a big position to me. I know it sounds like a lot, like, whoa, you know, especially if you don't know me, you're like, well, this guy, this YouTuber, he put 20 something thousand dollars in the penny stock, and he's got another 100,000 plus dollars in this planet stock that is another penny stock, and so it seems like it's a lot of money, but everything's relative, okay? And Warren Buffett could go buy, uh, well, it wouldn't really make sense for him to do this, but Warren Buffett could go buy $50 million of a penny stock tomorrow, which once again, 50 million doesn't make any sense to buy of a penny stock. But let's say Warren Buffett went and did that. That sounds like a ridiculous number. $50 million he just put into a penny stock to Warren Buffett that's like this much of his wealth, okay? That's literally like nothing, okay? So when I find a stock that I wanna play around with that I think is a speculative play, which this stock definitely is, I'm willing to do it with a much lower amount of money than what it might seem on the surface. Let's just put it that way. And kind of the way I think about this is, at first my spec stock was Tesla, okay? So that was my, my spec stock. That was like the, <clears throat> let's call it like the 2018 to 2019 uh, spec stock. Now, Tesla way overperformed and obviously Tesla's not spec stock anymore. Like Tesla's just a beast company now, okay? It, when I bought it, it was speculative because there were bankruptcy risks, there were a lot of risk around Tesla, but that all went away and now they're just a flat out beast Tesla, okay? And that's great for Tesla. And then all of a sudden this year, kind of my new, uh, I would say more spec stock was the planet, okay? And that kind of became my, my spec stock. But now I look at the planet and although it's still a fairly cheap stock, it's $3 and something, I don't even look at that as a super spec, like, you know, speculative stock now. Like I look at it, they have they have so much money now on the balance sheet because they've raised so much money. They The numbers out of there are ridiculous. And I look at the risk of that business and unless, you know, I don't know, everybody decides to also make MJ illegal in all the different states, which is definitely not gonna happen. If anything, we're gonna go the other way with that. Like, I don't even look at that as that speculative anymore when it comes to the planet. It's obviously more to the speculative side, but when I look at the numbers they have and the balance sheet they have now and how much money they've raised, it's not nearly as spec as it once was, let's put it that way. So I'm looking at planet, I'm like, that's not a spec. So now there's this new stock I found that is growing revenues, Gosh, this one's growing revenues probably um, 300 to 500% range. I mean, they're growing so fast, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous right now. And so I'm looking at this one and I'm saying, this looks like a phenomenal new spec stock for me. It's a risk, absolutely. It's a very, very young company. They've only been around for a few years. They only got listed on the, the stock market this year. So it definitely fits the speculative category. But if we're talking about speculation and we're talking about we're gonna, you know, we're gonna put a little risky money out there, 
I want something that's growing insanely fast and is going after a massive category. And if it's not going after those categories, like what am I doing in that stock? Like there's no reason for me to take a big risk in a penny stock, right? A stock that's under $3 a share, let's say for instance. There's no reason for me to take that risk unless the stock is growing massively and the TAM for this company is ridiculously huge. If it's not that situation, it's not worth it. So sometimes I'll see people all the time and they, they pick really bad spec stocks because they're buying into speculative stocks that ultimately some of these speculative stocks are not even growing that much and are not even growing after uh, going after that big of categories and they'll buy into some of these stocks and it's like, what are you guys doing? Like if you're gonna buy spec and you're gonna take that type of risk and you'd rather put that money in that stock rather than put it in, I don't know, Apple or Google or, or, or the FB or Amazon or something that's much easier money, right? And you wanna take that risk. You better be in something that has ridiculous growth, okay? With the planet, as a company that should grow revenues 100%, if not more than 100% next year, okay? And this new stock I just started buying, this company should grow revenues by, you know, let's say 300 to 500%, and they should grow 100% plus for years to go in the future. And so when I look at a stock like this, it makes sense for me to buy it. And it makes sense for me to limit my risk though. You know, if a big position for me is a quarter million dollars or more, okay? So if I put a quarter million in the stock, that's different. That's a big level of risk. But if I'm putting like, let's say 20K, 50K, 70K in a stock, that's not nearly as big a risk. Remember Planet, I, although the position's six figures plus now for Planet, I didn't put that much money in it. I think I put maybe 50,000 to maybe like $70,000 actually into the stock. It's just the stock has grown like crazy and now that's a position that's probably worth 150,000 if not much more than 150,000. It wasn't like I put all that money in, it's just gone up a lot. And with a stock like this, I will limit my position sizing, I'll build the position out a little more and um, we'll, we'll kind of see what happens with that one. But that's kind of the trick with spec stocks. Like you can't, you can't get way too heavy into them and they better be growth beasts and they better have massive TAM opportunity and it better be somewhat realistic where you can see that company going. I see people all the time buy some of these spec stocks that it's like what they're trying to do is almost impossible, man. That's how you get yourself in trouble. What this company's doing is, is pretty realistic to what they're, they're trying to pull off and things like that. So uh, anyways, I just wanted to cover all this, this the, do a whole video on spec stocks, penny stocks, and things like that. I learned a lot over the past 24 hours, needless to say. And uh, yeah, you know, don't go too crazy with the spec stocks, any penny stocks. Um, you know, it's just like, it, it keeps you a little alive, you know? I mean, I own a lot of stocks that, are relatively boring stocks, uh, but they make me a lot of money. But sometimes you like to kind of, you know, get that little Vegas out. Like I want to go for the, I want to go for the 10x. I want to go for the 100x stock, man. And uh, sometimes that can be a little fun. But it's all about moderation, folks. As in with uh, drinking as well. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for watching and have a great day. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up. Helps the YouTube algorithm. Check out Stock Up. Peace.